All right, let's do the chapter 15, part one problems. Number 27 is really just a warm up, a little plugging and chugging. So we know that one square centimeter is 0 0.0001 square meters. And if you want to review about, um, you know, when you go from one square unit to another or one cubic unit to another, uh, we did a little bit of that in chapter one. P equals F over A. So F equals PA, and that means our force is 50.5 Newtons. Now, number 30, um, the weight of the car is going to determine um, the surface area of the tire's contact with the ground. So let's start by converting one PSI to Pascals. One PSI is 6.895 times 10 to the third pascals. And <clears throat> since we have 30 PSI, we multiply the number by 30 to get um, 206,850 pascals. Now we divide the total weight by the four tires because we want to find the weight on each tire and that's 2,224.25 Newtons. P equals F over A. So F equals PA, and the P is the total pressure, so we add atmospheric pressure to gauge pressure, and that's why we add the 206850 to the 1.01 times 10 to the fifth. Um, and doing the algebra, we get an area of 7.2 times 10 to the negative third square meters. Number 33, we have a gauge pressure, or PG, equals rho GH. And so with just some plugging and chugging, we get H equals 10.3 meters. Number 36, um, continuing with our definition of force and area, we know the area is 50 square meters. Now, um, the pressure here is gauge pressure, so I replace the P with rho GH and that's rho gh times the area. Um, and then plugging in what we know, we can find that the total force is 1.5 times 10 to the six newtons. All right, in 42, using gauge pressure again, um, I have 3.00 times 10 to the fifth for the pressure. I know the rho and I know g, and I can find the total height and that's going to be 30.58 meters. Now, this apartment height is uh, is halfway up, and so i got to divide that height by 2, and that gives me 15.3 meters. In 47, it seems a little tricky, but it's not so bad if you kind of just lay it out. So the pressure outside is the atmospheric pressure plus rho GH. So you got to think about all the pressure that's above the water plus all the pressure of the water to that depth. Then my internal pressure is 0.9 of atmospheric. That's a given. And the area of the hatch is 0.5 square meters. So let's put it all together now. My P net is going to be my um, external pressure or outside pressure minus my inside pressure. And if I, if I do that, P at plus rho GH minus 0.9 piat, um, that's going to give me my 0.1 piat plus rho gh. Uh, and now we use that as our p net expression. So I can plug a lot of things in now and find that the total force is 1.0 times 10 to the fifth newtons. Okay, so uh, let's go on to next part of the problems and we're going to have one that covers Pascal's principle. So <clears throat> this just says that for a given pressure the ratios of force and area are going to be equal. So I've got F1 over A1 equals F2 over A2. The ratio is 1 to 3. I can get that from the givens. And 3 times 26.2 is 78.6 kilograms. 
Now in 59, we need to be careful about getting the areas. That's um, the, the only tricky part about uh, this particular problem is you've got to remember that it's pi r squared. And so A1 is 0 0.0016 pi and A2 is 0 0.01 pi. We get that from our given radii. Using Pascal's principle, F1 over A1 equals F2 over A2, plug and chug, and find that the F2 is 3750, so 3.75 kilonewtons. Um, <clears throat> 61 is uh, quite similar. We first find the force, so um, that's M2G, and that's going to give me 2499.588 newtons. I'm given the radii, and I can find A1 and A2 using the same method as the last problem. And then the setup is the same with Pascal's principle, plugging and chugging, and I get an F1 of 100 newtons, and I can find the, the pressure of 1.27 times 10 to the 6 Pascals. Um, 69, just a simple problem with buoyant force. So buoyant force is rho g v. And um, I have 1,000 times 9.81 times 1 times 0.5 times 0.6. And I get 2.9 kilonewtons. Keep in mind when you're doing buoyant force that the, the rho g v we're talking about, that's the, the rho of the displaced liquid and it's the V of the displaced liquid. Uh, you're not thinking about the density uh, or volume of the solid that's submerged or floating even. Um, we're talking about displaced liquid, and this is uh, Archimedes' principle. Okay, so um, in, in 72, it it's a little bit tricky because, see, the volume of the solid is going to be the area times its height. And the volume of this place liquid is also the area times its height. So when, when you stick the shape into the liquid, this place liquid assumes the shape uh, of, of the thing. Um, and that's why we can, we can do this. Okay, we can, we can have AH be the expression for both. So the weight of the solid is rho SGV, and that's, um, that V would be the, the V of the solid, of course. In fact, I can, just to be clear, I can put a little S here, because we're talking about the volume of the solid. So rho, rho SGVS is gonna be the same as rho SGH, or sorry, rho SG, AHS. And so my buoyant force is the force of weight of the displaced water by definition. And now that's going to be rho L G A H L. So rho S G A H S equals rho L G A H L. And the G's cancel. So I'm just left with rho S H S equals rho L H L. Solving for rho L, I get 1.36 times 10 to the fourth kilograms per cubic meter. Um, so what you need to do with this problem is remember that um, you, even though the displaced liquid isn't there anymore, we can consider that it has a shape. And that shape is gonna be the same as the, the solid that is submerged. Okay, number 82, um, again, my buoyant force is rho GV, and I'm given the 500, I know the 1000 and the G, so I just need to find the volume, uh, and the volume is going to be the volume of the displaced liquid. Now, um, since I know that the volume is length times width times height, and I know what the length and width are, I can use that information to solve for the height, the height of this place liquid. And so that's gonna be 5.1 times 10 to the negative fourth meters. All right, uh, hopefully that helped a little bit for the solutions of this problem set. 
if you have any questions about any of them, especially number 72, because I think that was the hardest one, uh, feel free to just, you know, ask me, email me, whatever. I'll be happy to help. Okay, see you in class.